Well, we've come to it, the final two in our long, long game of seven by seven ages. It's not the longest game in the world, but it's been the longest game that I've played, for sure. Even longer than the Pop Origins game I played in terms of time spent actually playing and number of days that have gone by in between the start of the game and the end. And we're not done yet. We're down to two left, and I thought it'd be good to tell you what's exactly going on. Points no longer matter, which is great. I understand and appreciate the use of points in games, but I like not having to think about them. Uh, it's just, it, it's like it takes your desire and puts it in a third place, uh, which is somewhere other than the map, somewhere other than what is actually going on. Though, uh, it, it can represent some things that that aren't necessarily represented on the map, such as um, you know if your if your civilization values things that are not uh, directly related to the elimination of your enemies, which is probably true of <laughs> most civilizations that they value those things. So the points are necessary, but we're doing away with them. It's last woman standing. I say woman because we're down to just two, and the two are runt and giraffe, and both I believe are females, or at least the card says that. The card does the card say their gender? Yes, it does, right at the top. And I never read this part off, but it says female there. And so um, I'm not making judgments based on what they look like. I, it actually says they're female. And just to, just to show that I'm honest about that, uh, it's a, this is giraffe's card. It also says female. So let's take a look now at, at their kind of relative positions because it's going to be a different sort of game. And so it'd be good to think about what 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 their options and their difficulties and their and all that are. Alright, so let's start with our game's obvious leader through most of the game. Although her points total no longer matters. We can actually just take these off. Let's just take them off. We're not even gonna think about points anymore. Uh, Runt. Runt has three no, Runt only has two empires. Uh, and I've cut off the starting of empires. This is like post-apocalyptic world is kind of what I'm thinking about now. If they draw new leaders, they're going to be future leaders. We're done with the modern leaders. We're done with the um, colonial leaders. We're done with the ancient leaders. We are uh, in future world. And Giraffe, or, not, or Runt, is down to two empires. But they're both strong empires in two different ways. Well, her she has the black counter set as the modern state. Not the greatest empire, the modern state, but the black counter set we've talked we've said time and time again is is the pure the, the purely strongest counter set she also has some good military cards no science advantages for them and they are weak well not super weak they have seven seven wreaths and if we look over here so the mongols have more yeah, so two of giraffe's empires have more wreaths than the modern state. Uh, they could, you know, if, if Runt puts down another wreath card on them, then, then that could protect them. But right now, they are vulnerable to god attacks. All right, what do they have that the others don't have? Well, they're the furthest along the progress meter. They're at as far as you can go. They can build any kind of unit, including uh, nuclear weapons, which normally the reason you don't want to use nuclear weapons is because it lowers your point total, but we're no longer using points. It's it's all about destruction, because we're tearing this game down. It says we're tearing the room down and moving away. All right, so they have the military. They, they've already built some planes. No one else has planes right now. Um, the Egyptians and these guys, who are not in the game anymore, can also build planes. All right, so they she has that advantage. Her Ephronic Egyptians also have a solid advantage. One, they're also pretty far far along. They can build um, the fighty plan, planes, but not the bomber planes. Right. And they also have the wreath advantage, and I don't think they're going to lose this advantage unless someone gets... unless Giraffe really puts a lot of resources into to building up one of her... Uh, probably, the, probably the Mongols... Um, in order to, to surpass them. So they have that. So we, we, we're seeing kind of, we could probably say that Runt's two empires are on the whole better than any two of Giraffe's empires. But Giraffe has three empires. So let's take a look at who she has. She has the Japanese, the Mongols, and the Spanish. Spanish are kind of the ones in trouble. Um, they are in between both of Runt's empires and 
they are unfortunately the furthest along on giraffe's track. So it's, you know, if giraffe wants to get any sort of like uh, parity with in terms of military units, she better get them up, or else she's going to have to be working on her two purple um, people who are in, both in Asia, the Japanese and the Mongols. So we're seeing that you know there's this the Spaniards in between. Uh, they might be useful to her in that, you know, Runt does need to get rid of them too, and it's probably in Runt's best interest to get rid of them fast before they get up. You know, she needs to keep the pressure on them so that they get torn down, and then there's going to be this long trek across, and probably the modern state will go this way to fight with the Mongols and the Japanese. So, interesting stuff. Um, Japanese, if, when built up, can have some really strong economic power. Uh, that I don't think any of the others would be able to get. Um, but a lot of the only thing that, a lot of what, what differentiates the, the empires at this point is going to be these things and progress. So if the Japanese can get their progress up and better cards, they can build cities faster, maybe that can work. Um, so what Giraffe's got to be hoping is that the Spanish delay runt long enough that she can build up her Japanese and, and Mongols as well. One more thing before I start playing, I'm going to probably go through this fast. I don't, I don't know that, uh, especially since a lot of turns are going to be, they might not be as action packed. So I'm, it's going to be a lot more skipping around. I might not even tell you as turns go by. Um, I'll just tell you when something dramatic happens and show you the, the results and maybe check in just occasionally so you can kind of keep some sort of track on what's going on. All right, we're in the middle of the second turn since I last spoke to you. Um, and a sort of the kind of what's going to happen is sort of a, a storyline is developing, so I thought I'd check in. Um, we are seeing the, the runt with her empires that are way far ahead of giraffes really getting a strong build up here. She has all these Star Wars things, uh, and then she has nuclear weapons as well. Remember, nuclear weapons, the disincentive for using them is you lose five glory, but glory no longer matters in this game. And so we're, she, and also because of that, she, she was able to double up on production. Giraffe is actually doing the same thing with trade and progress um, this turn. But anyway, we're seeing that Giraffe really needs to get up into this area as quickly as possible. I think she was premature in eliminating Flush because her empires are not ready. Um, she needs to get up here so that she can have any hope. Uh, to succeed. Uh, another thing she can try to do, and she started to do this, is chip away at the, the the wreath advantage of the Pharaonic Egyptians. If she can get rid of that, maybe she can play some other, use some of these cards, some god powers that, that might allow her to trump, um, in some respects, the scientific advantage that Runt has. I think it's a turn later. I, I haven't been keeping too, track, too uh, close a track. Uh, turns go are going really fast here. Um, in in this way of playing. Um, I, I'm stopping for a moment to talk to you because we have a time wrinkle on a maneuver and we are going to have four different empires maneuver twice essentially. So let's look at time wrinkle so we kind of get an idea what that does. Place an action marker, blah, blah, blah. Every empire with that marker can perform that action a second time after all other actions are concluded. Now I don't know if that means the wild card gets done again or not. I'm going to say no, that it's only if only the actual maneuver itself. Okay, so we're the Pharaonic Egyptians are going to maneuver twice, the, the modern state is going to do it once, and then also the Spanish get to maneuver twice, and the Mongols get to maneuver once. So let's take a look at where everything's going. Um, we have a bunch of nukes here, Star Wars here, it's the same as last time I talked to you really, it was just, uh, I, I think last turn was mainly production. Um, Spanish. They need to try to defend themselves against these guys. They have some boats. They could start the naval campaign um, to, uh, against the, the encroaching modern state and the um, Pharaonic Egyptians here if they wanted to try and kind of beat, run back and, and keep her busy. Um, the Mongols, 
they want to kind of fill out and take these cities so that they have a little bit more production behind them, and then also maybe shift so that they're in a better defensive position for uh, against these guys who are these planes and these nuclear weapons that are coming up. Well, you can't really defend against the nuclear weapons actually. Um, yeah, I don't know how giraffe's going to deal with that. Uh, but also the Mongols would love to bring their boats down here to try and support in this area. Really, you know, giraffe needs to stall, um, runt as much as possible until our people get up. Japanese are getting close. Uh, they've been trading a lot. Mongols have been trading a lot. Spain could, could start trading, but they've been kind of under assault, so they haven't been. So I'll, I'll, I'll come back in after the maneuvers and let you know what's going on. After last time I showed you the mound, I saw something. I wanted to show it to you now. I, I don't know if um, you maybe saw it when I showed it to you previously, but I didn't. So I wanted to make sure I pointed it out. And it's right here, growing from where the mound used to be. It's a, it's a weed. I've just made a decision with regard to nuclear weapons in this game uh, in order to to reinstate some of the, the balance that was meant by the subtraction of five points every time you use them. Uh, one thing nuclear weapons do to your opponent is, well, they do two things. One, it destroys everything in a particular space, and the other thing is anyone who owns that, who owned that space before everything was destroyed goes back one progress. So I think it's fitting that both sides would go back one progress if that happens. or. Th or whoever owns the space and then also the perpetrator of the nuclear attack goes back a progress. It just seems, it seems a little more fitting. So there's, there's more of a disincentive to use them, I guess. And you can see them being used right now. The Pharaonic Egyptians have sent four nuclear weapons, uh, three of them against the Mongolians and one against the Japanese. So let's just watch things explode. Here we go. Boom. That's the sound of that things of things exploding on this map. Nuclear weapon also explodes, and so that's gonna lower the Japanese one, and it's also gonna lower the Pharaonic Egyptians one. And that's interesting because it I, I think it balances out well because if you keep using them, you're gonna go back in progress, and then you know you have to build them back up again. So that, that that's gonna be problematic for the Pharaonic Egyptians in this case. And also there's a limited counter set for the nuclear weapons and they're shared by everyone so it's like kind of first come first serve so that, that makes for a more interesting game with the nuclear weapons. I'm just gonna go ahead and move the Frank Egyptians the, other, the rest of the way back. One, two, three, they've detonated four so and I guess the Mongolians are gonna go back two more it's going to make it hard for a giraffe to catch up, but it's going to take a while for the Pharaonic Egyptians to get back up to the point where they can build these nuclear weapons. However, I still think Runt has a strong advantage now because the, the modern state can build them. All right, here we go. And there is a defense against nuclear weapons. It's these Star Wars things. The designer was really into Star Wars, which I don't believe ever actually came to pass. The Star Wars project. It was a, something I remember from the Reagan era, right? Oh, and I forgot about this. Yeah, here are the Star Wars. They just attacked Japan. Yay. Okay. They can pretty. Much, they can essentially teleport. They can just drop down anywhere. So, here we go. Interesting though. This. Um, so anytime there's missile units, the city's, the city's defense value isn't counted, but Star Wars aren't missile units. So. The, the city does is able to defend against them. So it it may look like it's, you know, 18 to 5, but it's actually 18 to 10 because the city is going to be helping. The modern state played an overrun card, allowing um, Runt another maneuver by them. And so she's so far gotten rid of the entire land presence of the Japanese um, and is attacking two of their submarines. This is a little bit more of a fair fight, though. It's 9 to 8. So it could go either way. I don't think the modern state has any advantage. And actually the Japanese, I think they have a boat advantage, do they? Uh, nope. Nope, they just, it, boats are, are cheaper for them. So the uh, draft could, could fight them off if she's able to. Doesn't have any more um, real estate, really, but 
at least she would still be alive. And if she can get a boat to land, I'm going to say that she can start producing again, I guess. So I can't remember last time I've checked in with you, but I just thought I'd jump in and show you the board state because it's looking really bad for giraffe. I mean, that was kind of kind of obvious going in as soon as we saw the nukes, correct? And the Star Wars and the whole progress thing. But the, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny. I was I was thinking that her hope was over here, but actually Spain seems to be her hope right now. They're, they're, they finally just are able to create planes. They have a, a decent group right here, though, you know, a well-placed nuclear uh, detonation would get rid of that whole stack. But still, that's a strong land force. I don't know if she can make good use of it. I mean, we're kind of, it's, it's kind of in the air right now. Um, but it's, it is now the, uh, the modern states turn and they're maneuvering. They have a bunch of nuclear weapons here. And, oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. As I'm starting a new turn, I wanted to give you a, a glimpse of giraffe's position right now because it's not good, um, as we could probably guess. The Japanese are, <laughs> are limited to this lone sub here. The Pharaonic Egyptian subs came up and destroyed the, the other two submarines she had. Uh, not a lot going on for them there. It's it's going to be tough. Hopefully for giraffe, Runt just ignores that submarine, but I don't think Runt will. Um, the the uh, Mongols, they're trying to just kind of like just keep spreading out so uh, so that uh, you know because in any one space Runt can beat beat them right. But each time she does, she lo she lowers um, lowers a progress. Uh, and so it's, it's, or, or, you know, to, to get the, uh, a, a sizable enough force to, to defeat even like, you know, this, this pair here would require a, a strong concentration of forces. So that's, that's difficult. So she's just kind of trying to delay and at the same time, kind of building up Spain slowly and slowly they, Spain can now make planes. And so she hopes this turn that she can get some planes there and maybe, uh, arranged to strike out at uh, the Pharaonic Egyptians and start chipping away at them here so that maybe Runt has to be a bit more defensive. These dice very well could and probably will represent the last stand of Japan. Japan, I don't know, I can't remember, I, I'm going through a lot of stuff here off camera. I can't remember what I've told you and what I haven't, but um, Japan ended up uh, their last sub went and fled to the Phoenix Islands, where Giraffe hoped that you know they would be able to rebuild. Um, she then uh, even protected the Phoenix Islands a bit with a couple of her Mongolian subs, um, thinking that you know if the subs had tried to chase after, then at least there would be a barrier there, maybe. Although I guess they could have just gone around. <laughs> she was just hoping, you know, hoping for to, trying to do something. Uh, her efforts have been fairly impotent, but we'll see. It's uh, two of the Star Wars canisters <laughs> um, warped over there, and it's going to be an 18 to 8 battle. Let's see how it works. Here's all of Giraffe's dice. That's not very good. I can tell it's not very good because there's lots of threes and fours. That's 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 really bad roll. And then we have five. 10, 15, yep, 18 here. All those Star Wars dice. Oh, we see a lot, not a lot of attack dice, but it's going to be enough. Definitely enough. Though maybe the sub can escape. I'll work it out. Sadly for Giraffe, her golden child, uh, the Japanese, never became a woman. And so one of her three empires has fallen, and that was kind of her big hope. It's not looking good. Now it seems like this, uh, Spain, Spain's her great hope. Let's, let's go Spain. Unfortunately, the Spanish just got hit by an equine fever, followed by a barracks revolt, which chipped away from their strong land force here, as well as their air force that they had been developing uh, in Andalusia. So that is, that's rough. Another round is passing. We're seeing this a turn, uh, the the dissolution of 
giraffe's forces. The Mongols have been pushed all the way down here. Basically, Run's just been maneuvering, maneuvering, maneuvering. Uh, there has been a cost, however. She used a lot of nuclear weapons, which brought her modern state down, uh, but it also brought the, the Mongols even further down. They're, they're way back here in age five now. Um, this, the Spanish got pushed back. Uh, they're still okay. They're still hanging on. They haven't, they haven't had to bear the brunt of the nukes yet. And they are almost, they almost have, have gotten nuclear capability. So that could work out well for them, um, depending on what Runt does. She could just snatch up all the nukes this turn, which is probably what she'll do. It kind of depends on how confident she's feeling. She doesn't have a... well, she could probably... she might be able to wipe out the Mongols this this next turn. We'll see what she decides. The Spanish are just a space away from being able to purchase nukes. Unfortunately, the Egyptians have bought all of the nukes, and unfortunately the Spanish, although they meant to trade in progress, they missed their appointment. They have overslept. The same thing Giraffe did to Flush's United States of America, um, Runt has done to Giraffe's Spanish, and she really needs any every every turn possible right now. Um, it's I, I've been on the edge of, of of asking her if she wants to concede for numerous turns now. Um, I think I still want to play it out though, just to maybe not the whole way, but till it's till it's totally inevitable. I think it's um, going to be the maneuver phase now. The Mongol Mongols will get to go first. There's not a lot of places they can go, but they can move. All right, Rudd's trying a lot of long shot attacks because Giraffe keeps spreading out. <laughs> it's really <laughs> annoying for for Runt. She would like her to just stay still so that she can fully crush her and be done with this game. She's aware that I have to move soon. Um, but she split up her forces to try, you know, very small, very weak odds. She, you know, Runt kind of has control over the odds, basically. Um, but these are not the best odds for her right now. She's only up by a few points in each confrontation. Uh, could be, could be tricky. Let's see how it works out. The Mongols are down to just two spaces left. With the help of a bargain card, uh, run or not run. Sorry. With the help of a bargain card, Giraffe was able to bring her Spa Spaniards to the the end of the progress track. So she's capable. She has the capability of building um, Star Wars units and nuclear units now. Uh, will it be in time? The it looks to be like the Mongolians are about to be wiped out, um, and there's a bunch of nukes, nuclear missiles over here in in. Uh, Egypt, well, in the Egyptian Empire, aimed at Spain, which are going to knock them down for each one that hits a progress level. So if they all, if 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 Front uses them all, she's going to be down here, and that does not look good. But it's an accomplishment. It's an accomplishment to be there, and I, I think we should be proud of Giraffe for that. Good job. Occupation, regional makeup artist. Childhood nickname, Giraffe. Secret fantasy to eat my way out of a chocolate vat. Unusual fact, I don't always like people. Pet peeve, cheap and prejudiced people. She'd like to meet Al Pacino. Personal motto, give people the benefit of the doubt, even if you don't always like them. That part I just kind of combined. Uh, most proud of my flowers. Reputation in high school, the shyest cheerleader. Three words that describe Giraffe are honest, sincere, fun. Giraffe was so close! Oh! It wasn't that close at the end. There, were, I, I could see paths that she could have won with, uh, but the, the timing just wasn't quite right. She didn't she didn't bet on the right horses that she had, or maybe there was just nothing she could do. Even even now, I ended maybe a little prematurely. Let's. I guess we should probably maybe want to see the board state. I didn't finish these battles. I just, you know, both the Pharaonic Egyptians and the modern state were both maneuvering. It seemed like they could win every single battle, or they had a good chance. And even if they lost, 
you know, for Giraffe to come back would have been really hard. I mean, the Mongolians were going to be gone, I'm pretty sure. Let's see, so here it would be 11 to 16. Chance, uh, well, no, 11 to 19. So they could have maybe won had I rolled it. You know, same here, it was uh, 18, oh, wow, it's 27 to, um, to 13. Again, it's possible they could have won that, but it's unlikely. It was just kind of like a long, drawn-out delay of the inevitable. And I don't know if that's interesting for you to watch. And, you know, I'm running out of time. And also, I think maybe Giraffe would have just kind of stepped aside at this point. I, I always play that they play to the end, but, you know, certain people have certain thresholds where they're like, okay, yeah, you beat me. There's no sense in playing this out because the game was at a point where it would just be like this long game of chase, right? So nuclear weapon here. Yeah. Clearing out Spain. You know, once Runt had these nuclear weapons for the Franc Egyptians, it was pretty unlikely. So here, this one would have been close. This was maybe 9 to 9. No, yeah, 9 to 9. So she could have won here. Could have won there. But by then, you know, Spain would be back here, and the Franic Egyptians would, well, no, the modern state would then be able to buy nuclear weapons and, you know, just finish them off that way. You know, they could have bought them here and sent them across the water. And it, yeah, so even if, even if the, if the Spanish had built up, you know, it would have been a thing like the, the, the Mongolians, you know, they, they would be able to do a game of scatter, but eventually they'd catch up. So we had the modern state shooting the nuclear weapons and the Franic Egyptians coming up with their land forces. There just wasn't a lot of, a lot of hope at that point. Uh, so. so I'm going to be very honest with you. I feel very tired right now. Um, and I think maybe too tired to really recapitulate or, or give any good thoughts on, on the experiences. Uh, the, the lengthy experience of this game, seven by seven ages. There are longer experiences, bigger experiences, more epic experiences one could have, but this was one. And this was a, a, good, a good trial for me in some, some respects. I, I definitely um, am more inclined towards the beginning of things and have a harder time at the end. I tried to do this last video all in one day and I succeeded. It's President's Day and I thought that was appropriate. Um, just as sort of like a microcosm of the game itself. So the last turn, uh, or the last, the last segment, uh, was, was kind of this drawn out thing and a lot was compacted and a lot was drawn out and <laughs> a lot was inevitable. Um, it, it's interesting, I always try to pick out narratives in these games. Maybe it's not interesting, but it's something to talk about. I always try to pick out narratives in these games and, um, the narrative of one person winning the whole time is probably one of the least interesting narratives you can um, come up with. That's why, for me, like super successful together seeming people are completely boring. Uh, though maybe there's something more to them, but if someone's telling me about how they're successful, I don't find that very interesting um, because it, it's usually usually seems inevitable that they would be successful. It's not like, it's very rarely there's this rags to riches story. Uh, my son's attacking me. That's... I'm gonna wait a, a few minutes. I'm distracted. Um... So I lost my train of thought. That's okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, things like this. It's it's really hard to to fully encapsulate them or to come up with a good goodbye uh, to something that's very long. Like friendships are like this. If you're friends with someone and then they leave, or you're going to be separate. Um, you can say you're going to be in touch or, or that something, something will kind of continue. And maybe that's true, but it, it'll, uh, it'll probably become something different. And that's okay. Um, but it's hard to put a cap on that. It's hard to say goodbye. So maybe sometimes it's just better to be done.
the end. Calling, calling now. The future's calling sometime now. The future's calling, calling now. The future's calling sometime now. The future's calling, calling now. The future's calling sometime now. The future's calling, calling now. The future's calling sometime now. The future's calling, calling now. The future's calling sometime now. The future's calling, calling now. The future's calling sometime now. The future's calling, Future's calling, come to me today. Say you'll come now. The future's calling, come to me today. 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 Beginning near the end.